Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups and My Breed of Supply and it's a question and answer time. So we've got some questions from last week, hopefully we'll come up with some good answers. And I've got a stage prop today. So this is a guy that I did a video on, on about uh, how to examine a dog. Um, so this guy is actually going to be a little stud dog for us, hopefully we're hoping. Anyway, he came to us here about 10 days ago and uh, we did a little uh, uh, video on how to check a dog out. And by the way, he went to the vet after that and the vet declared him to be full of life and absolutely healthy as a horse. So um, apparently the video we did was correct and uh, he's been with us now for 10 days and we just love this little guy. And actually he just went for his first swim just now. So you can see behind us we have a swimming pool. So I just want to point out something here that uh, obviously dogs and swimming pools, lots of fun, dogs and swimming pools can end up with drowned dogs. So when our we want our dogs to be introduced to the water so they at least know what it is. On this swimming pool behind me, there's a deep end which will absolutely do a dog in. And there's a shallow area right here. When we built this pool, we built it with mind of the fact that we have dogs and also that we have grandkids. So there's a shallow area right here with some steps to come up. So the important thing here, I think, is if, you've got, if you're around water, a couple of things. If your dogs are going to go swimming, then put one of those uh, life jackets on them. Uh, introduce them to the water so they're not scared of it, but also show them where the exit to the pool is. This puppy's had his first swim. Uh, he knows there's a deep end. He knows that hopefully he will. He discovered the shallow area, he discovered the steps. So we're hoping that if he ever by mistake jumped in here without our attention, that he'd uh, at least survive that. So just be safe with your dogs. Lots of people will say the French Bulldogs don't take French Bulldogs near water because they have these, what's called brosocephalic short short faces, muzzles, and they can in inhale water easily. And that's certainly true. But our experience with it is, is that, um, that we uh, um, uh, have never had a problem with a dog getting in the water, but uh, certainly under supervision and never by themselves. Okay, so I'm wondering if you're gonna behave yourself while I'm doing this. Are you? He's a cute little dog. Okay, here's a lilac, double A recessive. Okay, so let's see, Daisy Peanuts, three hours ago. I just got my first blue Frenchie. I got the AKC papers, but I have not registered yet. My question is what color code will Ace Casey accept for a blue French Bulldog? Blue is not listed. That's right. If you look at your AKC forms, blues, chocolates, lilacs, those are not colors that are on the form with a code that you can put in there. But you can do a paper submission. So you take the paperwork, you fill it out, you have to give a photograph of your dog and you have to put a note as to what the color of the dog is. And then you can register the dog as blue. So that's the way around that. And, and by the way, there's gonna be a lot of people gonna call me on this. They'll say, you can't register blue, AKC, blue is not a registrable AKC color. A French Bulldog, purebred, is an AKC registrable dog. And absolutely, as long as you've got AKC paperwork, from, you gotta get my mic, from both parents, you can absolutely register a dog regardless of what color it is. Just he does have no place in the show ring. You cannot show a blue dog, or a chocolate dog, or a lilac dog in the show ring. But you can absolutely hear a See that? The first plane. The plane, the plane. Okay, so the answer to that is paper one. Okay. Stephen Porter, 14 hours ago, if if you were to breed at, at 15, well, I want to pre preempt this. This person here has sent some questions about breeding a dog on progesterone levels and they're questioning what I'm talking about and the reason is that they hadn't realized that they are talking about a progesterone level in nanograms per mole. Everybody in the United States pretty much universally talks about nanograms per milliliter. If you're, if you're getting your readings in moles, you have to divide by approximately three, it's actually 3.18. You divide the numbers by 3.18 to get the appropriate numbers in what we're all used to in the States, which is nanograms per milliliter. So he starts talking about, I was told the eggs aren't mature enough until about 60 nanomoles. So, and I had mentioned that you were gonna breeding on about 15. Well, if you divide 60 by three, you get 20, and 20 is really close to 15. The numbers rise real quickly. So I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but I just wanna make the point here. When you get readings, make sure that they are in nanograms per milliliter. Five in nanograms per milliliter is a dog that is ovulating, will be bred two days later. The day after it'll be an eight, the day after it'll be a 15. If you are reading in moles per milliliter, which I think you see a lot of that in, the, in the, maybe the UK and Europe, then that would be a five would become a 15. 
and you'd be breeding on about a 50. So just pay attention to that. Make sure that you've got the right, because you can get tripped up on this. Uh, can a chocolate boy produce blue? No. A chocolate boy cannot produce blue. A chocolate boy can produce chocolate. A chocolate boy that carries blue can produce blue dogs. Or a chocolate boy that's also is blue, which is a lilac, can produce blue dogs. You have to have, and that gets to another one here. We're going to put two together here. Just about all the genes that we talk about to do with color are what are called um, recessive. You have to have, both parents have to have at least a copy of that color to produce that color in the offspring. So there are some things that are not recessive, but specifically those are brindle and merle. So you can get a merle dog with one copy of merle, and you can get a brindle dog with a single copy of brindle. So those are dominant colors. Everything else is recessive. If you want a blue dog, both parents have to at least carry a copy of blue. If you want a chocolate dog, both dogs have to at least carry a copy of chocolate. Uh, cream dog, both do dogs have to at least carry a copy of cream. Six. Um, what genes did his parents for Sir Hump Oh, he wants we're asking about my new dog that I showed, my new stud dog called Sir Humpelot, who's a platinum. What colors, uh, what co did the parents have? So the answer to that is, is that the, the dad was a lilac, so he was, uh, that's why he gave a chocolate and a, g and a blue gene to every puppy, including Sir Humpelot. And he was a, a Y, so he had a copy of recessive black. Mum was a blue that carries chocolate and she was ATA. So what happened was Sir Humpelot ended up getting a blue from both parents, a chocolate from both parents, cream from both parents, and recessive black from both parents, no brindle, no pie, and that's why he ended up being such a special dog. I did a video on the uh, prolapsed uh, butt on a boy, and so people asked follow up on that please. Well the answer is he, we couldn't push it back in. We did show you that on the video. He immediately went to the vet. The vet said, oh yeah, I'm, there's no way I'm getting this back in without sedating him. Sedated him, stuck it back in, put a couple of stitches around so they closed the area up a little bit, put him on a soft diet, and that guy is as right as rain. The stitches were taken out here a few days ago, and we still got him where he's kind of, not in general population, he's kind of in a, a big crate. He's on a four by four cage actually, just so we don't want him jumping around. But, uh, oh, you just got my mic. <laughs> I wonder what, how that worked out in the morning. Um, but he is doing great. So, so the answer was, um, yeah, we couldn't get it back in. So some people said, hey, you shouldn't be breeding that dog. Look, the reason he had that was because he had a gut parasite. So we got him on a worming medication and fixed that. He was just straining like crazy. That was the reason. It wasn't there's a genetic problem. It was simply he had a gut. Some people said, is that, because he, uh, is that a hernia? No, got nothing to do with hernia. None of my dogs have hernias. You don't want to breed a dog that has an inguinal hernia. A hernia is a place where there is a, on this dog here, by the way, if you want to see if the dog's got a hernia, what you do is you bounce the dog up and down and you look at the crease, you look at this crease right here and here. And if he has a hernia, there'll be a little bulge that will show up. Can you point be, that out again? Yes, be right here, right here is an inguinal hernia. And if he has an inguinal hernia, that looks like there might be something going on. That's just a fat. An inguinal hernia, you'll be able to push it back in, it'll stay in until you bounce the dog and it'll pooch out. And typically it's just on one side. An inguinal hernia is actually what's going on is there's a little hole where when the testes drop, they go through that hole and the, the part of the gut can go, it's where the femoral artery comes down from the abdomen down into the leg. And that little, that little um, um, hole closes up, but if it doesn't close up properly and a piece of, her, a piece of gut goes through there, it's called an inguinal hernia. It's got to be fixed. Um, and you would not breed a dog with an inguinal hernia because there is a potential hereditary um, part to that process. But that dog there, if you had an inguinal hernia, that would have nothing to do with this end of the dog. This end of the dog, a prolapse, whether it be a prolapsed in a, in a, in a female um, with a vagina or whether it's with a dog with its anus, the fix is the same, stick it back in, Maybe it stays in there. If it doesn't, you put a stitch in it. And that's probably not, I mean, it can be hereditary condition, but in the situation that we're talking about, it was because the dog had a, a gut problem, not a hernia, had, a, had, a, had basically had a parasite in its, in its intestine. Uh, what if I females went into heat six months ago? Heat was extremely heavy. Are other females still hasn't gotten to heat 
and, and they're just over eight months old now. They both try to hump each other. Is there anything that we can do to induce a heat? I'm concerned. May I have missed it? Well, the good news is, is that Frenchies typically go in heat about every six months. Sometimes it's less than that. Quite often it's longer than that. I've got dogs that take a year before they go into heat. It's quite normal, don't get worried about it. It is possible to miss a heat, because you can have a thing called a silent heat, where you don't have the normal blood discharge, so you don't realize it's going on. But look, here's the deal. Wait your time. Um, if you're seeing dogs that are starting to hump on each other and they haven't been doing that, it's quite possible that dog is about to start coming into heat full blown. You can always do a progesterone test. Progesterone level on a dog that's not in heat will be less than one. A dog that is in heat is gonna be somewhere between one and 20. A dog that has gone through its heat and it's got another couple of months before it would have puppies will show a progesterone level above 20. You've got the hiccups. Above 20, or oh, you're barking, one of the two, above 20. Even a dog that's not bred, that's gone through heat cycle, will have a progesterone level that's rise and will be above 20. So if you've missed it, that dog, regardless of it's bred or not, the progesterone level will be above 20. So that's how you can tell. 10, um, no, 11. All right. Um, should I spay my boy? I hope we're talking about a dog, not, not, a, not a teenage boy. Anyway, no, the answer to this one is, it really depends on what your goals are. Look, if this guy is going to be in the house with you, absolutely, I would spay a dog. Uh, if you don't spay a male, they tend to want to go pee on everything, and uh, they can, you know, they can be a bit more dominant and a bit harder to handle. And I think spaying is a good thing. Obviously, if you intend to use that dog to breed another dog, you can't spay the dog. But you've got to, have to put up with the fact that he's going to be behaving a bit crappy, especially as a female heat. So, should you spay your dog? Yeah, spay your dog six months or older. If you if you have no intention of breeding that dog, so you don't have accidents. And so he behaves a bit better and so he doesn't pee in the house. So the answer to that is probably yes. Um, Ashley with American Bullies. Oh, I have a female that is ATAT and I have a male that is little E, little E, little D, little D. So the male is a champagne. He is a he is a blue covered in cream. Little D, little D is blue, little E, little E is cream. Cream covers everything up, so he looks cream, but he is a champagne, so he is a blue covenant cream. The girl is 80 AT, she has full 10 points. So we're asking what would we get if we put those two dogs together? Well, the answer to this is these are completely unrelated genes. Although they're color genes, all of these genes stand on their own. If a dog is literally, literally, it's cream, regardless of any other gene it might have. If a, if, so if you, so, so I can't answer your question because I need to know more about the color genetics of both dogs to tell you what you'd get. But I can tell you this. The male is a champagne. Every puppy he produces will at least carry cream. He is blue, so every puppy that he produces will at least carry blue. Mum is ATAT, -AT, 10 points, so every puppy that she produces will at least carry 10 points. That's all we know from this. And I think that that's probably our time is up. How are we doing there, Russ? 14. 14 minutes? Okay, very good. Hey, well, again, thank you very much for looking at our videos. If you've got comments about how we're doing a great job, let us know and subscribe to us. Give us a thumbs up. If we're doing a crappy job, let us know. If we're getting things wrong, let us know. We will reference those in future videos. And we know there's plenty of videos for you to watch on YouTube. And we're honored that you'd spend the time to look at ours. And I think that hopefully, and tell me whether or not a little puppy in the video helps or not, because it certainly makes my life feel Hey, better. let's get shots of our little sea diver. Yeah, so she took a, he took a little swim, and, he's, and he, did, he actually took an, a bit of an unintentional swim, but we made it a training lesson for him, and of course we were around to make sure that, but he jumped in the pool because we weren't paying attention for a few seconds, and, and again, I want to point, I want to make it, you know, if you've got a Frenchie or any dog, especially a young dog, definitely supervise these guys. Things can go, I mean, you wouldn't take a human baby and leave it in the swimming pool unattended, nor should you with any of your dogs that don't know how to swim. And he's like, okay, I want to see you. Thanks to everybody for watching. Bye-bye.